Hi. Um, this is a quick unboxing of a new watch that I got. And the brand, I believe, is pronounced, is it Rue? It's supposed to be French, I believe, for wheel. And this company is a micro brand that is focused on uh, vintage styled um, motorsports themed uh, chronographs, stuff that you might be familiar with from the 60s or 70s. Um, but what's great about this brand is that, um, and their style is that they draw from the past and they kind of mix it up and put together something very unique uh, that isn't uh, what most people would consider it an homage or otherwise a copy of some sort. Uh, which I have no problem with homages, but I did have a lot of them. And at this stage, I am getting a little bit. Uh, not bored or sick or tired of them, but they, um, I've had my fun and I want to try something, focus things that are a little bit more original. Uh, they may still draw from certain designs, but uh, they are less directly related to anything as much as possible. If I'm going to get something, it's going to be that uh, is as much as uh, original product as possible. Anyway, so I was drawn to this brand after watching a video uh, first shown to me. Well, I watched it on uh, Armand the Watch Guy and um, I was really taken with this watch once I saw it and I I didn't think I would be but um, and they have three models basically and a couple variations on each of those three models but uh, the CHR model is the one that got to me. It just has this asymmetrical look and it's very clean yet you know just enough details in there and it, it looks pretty nice um and i got the chr3 version which is silver case stainless steel uh i think it's got kind of a a bee plastic finish if i'm not mistaken and it's got like an antique silver i think it's what they call it um dial so it's not completely bright silver it's got probably a slightly cream or uh, warmish tone to it, which is kind of nice, and it's a panda dial, so the, there's two sub dials that will be uh, in black, and the other accent color is yellow. And I thought that one was pretty nice. Uh, the other ones are in are in black PVD cases, and they're basically dark. Maybe they might have white sub dials, or I think there's one that's kind of gray and black, so it's really, it's a, maybe the darkest combination. So this one's nice and bright, and uh, we'll get to it. So this is the box. And um, it's pretty small, as you can see, and uh, nice clean packaging. And it just has a quick access here with a magnetic closure. And uh, well, actually, this would just sit right in here like that. And I guess I spoiled the reveal, but uh, here you go. The watch is right in there, and it looks really nice, even from this little cutout window. Let me see if I can get closer here. And um, there is no running second hands, which I thought I might be concerned about, but to tell you the truth, I'm not. And so uh, it's all good. And I suspect this it is actually it's, it probably has something keeping the battery from running because this is like you know the trademark uh, photogenic uh, view of a any watch where you got the. 10 to 10 kind of a happy face is basically what it means uh, and it's usually better than down or any other position so i probably have to take something out to release the battery and so it can run or actually you know probably a pusher might be out so that it's it's not running we'll see in a moment and anyways quickly here's the book pretty simple fold out style um and this is the one I got here. And these are the other two models I was talking about. Uh, this one has got a gray dial, dark gray dial, and black subdials and yellow. And this one, I believe, yeah, they all have a little bit of yellow in it, I think. And there's this has white around this outside. Uh, and obviously the white subdials there. And this is mine. And uh, yeah, I just, these are slick too, but I this was what I was feeling. And uh, we shall take a look in a moment. And just quickly, here are the other models. Um, I forgot what this one is. Is it the SSD? 
And what actually does it say here? Yeah, H. So yeah, this is the HDS model, and this is pretty nice too. And yeah, SSD right down here. And this is pretty sporty too. It's got kind of like this checkered thing going on, sort of like what you see on, um, I guess, one of the Speedmaster models or, or two have this kind of design. I'm sure some others do, but that's the one that comes to mind right off the bat. And uh, yeah, and then these are kind of nice with the, the little yellow accent in the center right there. And that's it. Oh, actually, there is a fourth model, a Cal. Um, I didn't even realize that. Uh, so anyways, and it's kind of like a, I think they're just, this one is more focused on the or like, kind of like a speedometer style. They just want, at least this one, just, since the, the other hands, the main hands are white, this is, uh, I guess, a red or orange. Uh, this lighting's kind of hard. I think it's orange. So it looks just kind of like a speedometer, which is kind of neat. This one, these, uh, you can see the hands more. I don't know. I mean, it sort of looks plain, but then yet, and this might be hard to read when you actually get it, but... Uh, this uh, this might be kind of cool just from a distance, you know. Just these are just very subtle. You can make it out from the shadows, and I think maybe if you get it, the tone of the watch will be enough to when you actually see it. These hands and against the background might actually pop up more than the photo is showing. Um, anyways, uh, let's see. That's basically it. Instructions, and uh, here we go. And let's pop off the front. It's got this foam padding. And there we go. Nice. And oh, it comes. You got to assemble it partially. So yeah, as I suspected, as you can see here, the uh, crown's been pulled out. And there's a little spacer here to make sure it doesn't engage just yet. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so it'll run in a second, but they just wanted you know, that's pretty cool. I never thought anyone would do this um, to, or at least with the quartz movement, to hack it basically so it doesn't run at all. I guess that will preserve the power. And it's picture perfect with the uh, the 10 to 10 position. The date, 14, I don't think it's significant. Uh, but just the general, this look is, is picture perfect. And I probably should take a quick snapshot of this before I continue so that people can see how it is in the box. All right, back again. So let's take the watch out, have a closer look here. And oh, that's nice, nice case. It, it looks, you see this, it looks infused pretty solid, you know, it just, I mean, of course, it's just a watch case, but there's something about it just feels right. And um, and check out the details here. It's you would think it just looks kind of flat, but if you look closely, um, there's kind of a sandwich effect here. There's some layering. So the outer chapter ring, as you might be able to see, is um, one layer, and then it steps down to the, the I guess, the antique silver dial. And then the subdials are just a, a level below that. And um, yeah, looks good. And the windows are nicely framed on the, uh, the date window right there. Yeah, I guess I didn't have to move over too much to the side, so let's do that. And uh, yeah, it looks good. And uh, actually, if Maybe this lady doesn't show it, but the gasket around the um, the crystal is actually yellow too, and so I'll see if I can get this in better light later. Uh, but uh, yeah, you actually see like a yellow kind of you can kind of see it, but you'll see like a yellow ring around everything on the, around the crystal, which is pretty neat. Uh, just a little extra attention to detail, and uh, here's the pushers. Um, and this should be a nice uh, pressing. And uh, I believe it clicks. So it's kind of a, this should be a mecha quartz movement. 
Um, I thought that was only something that is from Seiko, but this has a Miyota movement in it, so that's Citizen. And I don't know, maybe they share some of the same stuff secretly. Who knows? Um, the practice, in some ways they're kind of the same, but some people say C Citizen's a little bit better. Um, depends on which one it is, but I, I don't know. I think they're pretty damn close. It doesn't really, I don't have any preference, but I do have more Seikos than Citizens. Uh, anyway, so this will have like a clicking sound. It'll have a really smooth sweep, smooth as a, a quartz can be, uh, that simulates what you would get from a automatic mechanical movement. And when you stop the pusher, I should have a flyback feature so that when you press this, instead of doing a sweep back, it should just snap back. And any of these sub registers, if they're if they've moved, if you've been timing long enough, they should also snap back to the zero position. And with a good quartz movement, if these ever get knocked, you know, by impact or, or whatever, and they're a little bit off alignment, they just kind of shift it off like a, you know, the next notch or, or movement. You should be able to push these in, I believe, as the usual procedure, and then you push one of these things, and, and then it'll, it'll probably do a cycle, and then you just push, push, push until you set it back to where it's zeroed, and then you push the next one, and you'll see whatever is the next one that's ready. Uh, it might be this one. I have to see, uh, but, you know, just want to do a little rant revolution, and if you need to set that, you just push it, and it'll keep going around to it. it goes back to the position that you want it, and so forth, and then you exit out of it, and you're good to go. So, um, let's see here. Inside the box, you get two straps with this. And this one is the leather strap that you get. And, oh, actually, hold on. Oh, okay, these are two sides. So this is uh, one side of the silicone rubber strap. And it's actually pretty soft. I don't know if I can bump up the... the uh, catch this here. I am trying to bump up the ISO here. Maybe if I do, or maybe if I lower the, there we go. Hopefully that didn't screw up the, uh, come on focus. Am I filming too much? Anyways, um, come on, good focus. Here we go. So, and it's uh, actually, yeah, this is actually the outside. That's right. It's supposed to have this perforated look, and this will be help moisture and sweat kind of not be completely against your wrist. And what's great about all these straps is that they have a quick release system, which is great because the uh, watch case itself does not have. Uh, drill lug holes on the the lugs here so this would help it out without having to fiddle with sticking the tool in between here and the fact you can just do it without tools is great and uh, that's kind of a one of the bonuses that I, I really liked about this so you get this leather option too which is pretty nice and as you can possibly see here if we walk on the focus um, come on yeah smooth textured leather leather and uh it's got the three holes rally style but it's not just a circle it's got kind of a you can see it's kind of elongated excuse it's slightly unique shape you know it's not your typical round ones like you will see in here in a moment uh but it's nice and here is the other part and actually that should be it this is glued in and silicone packets just to keep it nice and good and let's see here you get of course the other option for um yeah i mean the other side of the uh band with a buckle and you can see it's signed right here and it's actually you can see it it's actually engraved really nicely and yeah so it's in the same kind of satin 
I guess it's bead blasted because it's not brushed. So it's got this kind of, you know, soft, semi-lustrous sheen to it, satin. So it's bead blasted. And the other half for the rubber strap. Oh, and it's signed on the inside here too. Bro. I wonder... This, oh yeah, it does have that on the leather too, you can see. So, and yeah, this is nice quality. And here's the other part, and so it gives it a very sporty look. Uh, I'm not going to run this yet, because I have to set it, but uh, let's try putting on this one. So all you do is, with these quick, um, come on, focus. Focus, there we go. You can see here this, these pins, you just push them out of the way and slide it in. So this goes on the top. So what you want to do is um, obviously put this one in and this side where you lift up, you just simply lift it up and it's in. There you go. Simple as simple as that. There you go. And let's see if I can demonstrate on this one. So same thing. This is the outside and you're going to put this side down first and then all you do is just it's real easy. You just take one finger even and once it gets below the lug, you just slide it, fits right in and feel it out. And whoops, where's the hole? Okay, it's a little bit further in. All right. Can you watch? I guess I'll get used to it. There we go. And that's it. You can do this basically one hand and finger. How, how great is that? And uh, I'll take this off later. And uh, I'm going to do another review later but uh let's take off my current watch this is of course my Seiko tuna and let's pop this on the wrist here and this is a 41 millimeter case uh I think 41 and a half to be more specific but uh the lug to lug is 47 I think uh Maybe 49, but it's not that wide as you'll see in a moment. And just stick this under here and pop this under that keeper, and that, that should do it. And it's only about 10 millimeters thick, I think, or maybe just under 11, if I'm not mistaken. It's somewhere around there. It's pretty, you see, it's very low profile, which is great. And you can do that with, of course, a nice quartz movement. Um, that's why I didn't mind that this doesn't have an automatic because it would be quite a bit thicker usually what they put in these things for some reason it just can only get down so thin unless they put in a mechanical one but you know this is a really good movement as far as I know and uh, it's quartz it's always going to be accurate you don't have to worry about winding it's ready to go and uh, the movement the clicking it's a tactile feel in the way it operates is very much like um, an automatic mechanical movement so you know it's got all the benefits of quartz it's got a little bit of the characteristics of an automatic mechanical and uh, a little bit of both of uh, best of both worlds so it's not bad and for just a little over 200 uh, it will do very nicely and uh, once I put that in or take that little tab out the safety tab and clear that and push it in it should start up well you won't see anything run but then uh, I'll show the chrono once I get this watch set up and do a natural review but here it is real quickly on the leather strap it's a nice perforated design mm, I wish it maybe was actually perforated so it would actually breathe but I'm fine I mean it's rubber silicone and it should uh, still be pretty good for some bit of perspiration control at least better than leather so the quick way to release this is um, obviously with these pins here so all you do is just lift up let's see I like doing it with from the top so we'll push this down and see it just comes right off come back here and focus push this down and you feel it loosen just pull it just like that and uh, that was the short one, so we'll go back here since I have the long. Put this in here. And 
uh, push this down. Let's see, pull this over. Whoops, just like that. There we go. Make sure. Always give it a little tug just to make sure it. One of them didn't come loose during the process either end. And again, very simple. Push it in. Push this pin down. Slip it under. Feel it out. And you here it goes. Test pull. Good to go. And this looks really nice here too. And we'll quickly try this on. This should be actually a review, but uh, again, if you know my stuff from before, I don't do this thing professionally. I just try to put out videos that no one has of watches that people haven't really seen. There's not much content out there on. There's only been two other reviews on this particular watch, or uh, well, brew in general. Uh, and, um, and that's it. And I think they deserve a little bit more, um, more love and, and uh, a little spotlight. Just a, it's a great little design. Um, and this looks great. It'll breathe. Le since it's leather, it's uh, this is very useful. Um, I'd be careful, anyways. I like to try to preserve my leather straps. So if it's particularly hot, I'll probably switch to the rubber. Or um, I do have a couple of NATOs coming in too, and uh, I think it will look great. And this is a 22 millimeter uh, NATO too. Oh wow, this would actually look pretty good because it's got yellow and blue, and it could work with this this too. Um, that's which is great. That's also why I, I like it. Oh, I wanted to get this because the 22 millimeter lugs are uh, will accommodate my 22 millimeter straps obviously and I have quite a bit of them with for my Seikos and well I have this I have I've had the turtle still I had another SRP 637 baby tuna and um, three Steinhards they all had 22 millimeters so I have quite a bit of straps options so it'd be great to reuse it on this guy and oh let me show you um before I take this off, let me show you the other strap options that I, actually I'll take it off, that I got for this. I only have one that came in today. I'll have another one tomorrow, but I'll probably uh, check that out later. And the NATOs, I have a black and yellow one, which will be great. And, uh, and actually a gray one that's got kind of like these shades of gray racing stripes, which I think will look pretty awesome with this. Uh, anyways, this I got from Clockwork Synergy. They have some nice stuff, you know, very affordable, good price, and um, I've been pretty pleased. And they ship surprisingly fast. Uh, most of the time, they get here in a couple of days. Um, I'm in California, and I think they're in Washington State, right above. So it's no wonder why they will be pretty fast, unless I'm mistaken. Anyways, this is what I got. Another rally style strap uh, from uh, Clockwork Synergy. Uh, but it is um, in gray and smooth leather. It doesn't have as much texture, obviously, as the, the, the one that's on the watch right now. But I like, uh, I got the traditional round, perfect circle holes on these. And the gray, I was thinking, would look pretty nice with this combination. And although the, the stitching is actually orange, on the picture it looked brighter, like almost like a warm yellow, like a golden yellow. Not like lemon that's very, you know, bright, but a little bit warmed up and mm, uh, with a hint of orange in it. But it has a bit more orange than the picture showed, which is fine. Um, visually, from a distance, you can't tell. And the amount of yellow that's on this watch is so thin and small. I mean, you'll get a hint, you know, you can catch it, especially in good lighting, not like this crappy lighting indoors. Uh, it'll show up even better. Uh, but I think it's close enough. And check this out. I mean, here, uh, I'm going to put it on. And these are great, too, because they also have um, the quick release system, too. So uh, this is going to be... Not a strap monster, though it kind of could be with the right ones. You, know, you can quite mix it up quite a bit. Um, but the fact that it has these super easy, 
I don't know why more strap companies don't make this. It's like, is it that hard? I mean, I've, actually, these, this is not a new concept. These have been around for a while, but for some reason, not everybody does it. Um, it's be so useful not to fuss with tools. Even if you have drill lug holes, this is just a snap. No tools at, at all. So we're going to stick this on here. And let's see how this goes. And all you got to do is pull this down. You can see that drop. I'm going to have to pull the leather. See, when it's a little bit new or tight, you're going to want to probably slip the leather, uh, the leather through right here a little bit and then pull it down so it can find its way and test. And let's do the other side. And again, I like to, I'm right handed and I prefer to kind of pull the switch on the top than trying to fiddle with my thumb on the bottom. It's kind of awkward. Let's put it in here. Fit this leather through first, just partially, just to guide it in a little easier and snap. Faster than anything. And what do you think? Yeah, I think this works. I mean, this this is orange, but it's like a bright orange. It's got a bit of yellow in it anyways. I don't know if you can see that. And I think, since this is not such a bright lemon yellow orange, I mean, bright lemon yellow anyways, it's got a bit of warmth. It's like a golden yellow, which is nice. Um, I think, okay, when you put it right up, of course, it seems a little off, but, you know, it's uh, it's kind of like, you know, a darker tone of yellow, I guess. <laughs> uh, and once you put it on, and it's probably not going to make a difference. This is a new strap, so we're probably going to need to. I can already feel that it's, you know, look. It's not the most uh, soft right out the box. It's not super hard, but you know, you gotta wear it, break it in. But I, you know, instead of getting that awkward straight up look right off your wrist, you wanna try to at least give it some curvature. And to kind of make it not smooth on the outside, well, you want it to make it look kind of nice and worn, especially for a automotive themed uh, watch it just makes sense to not have it so spanky new like you have never driven a car before <laughs> you know it should look like you've been driving for a while so uh, as, as much as your car you know your watch you know put as much love into it anyways that should do for now probably can condition it with wearing it more and obviously uh, maybe putting it on a um, a watch pillow in a in the case. So let me put this in. This is a pretty thick strap. I don't know if you can tell. And it does. Uh, it's pretty straight. I was thinking maybe it tapered a little bit. If it does, it's very little. Okay. Here it's a little bit on the loose side. Let me see. It might be okay just to show, but let's see what happens if I out and try to find the next hole this is actually a better fit and I think it'll all come together better once I've worn it more and uh, broken it in but that should do like that all right I think I think this works you know this gold kind of st contrast stitching and uh, the look on it with the yellowish golden yellow here and the, the watches silvery gray I think I think it works you know it's just a darker tone of the gray so this still is bright and contrasty so it, it still pops compared to this doesn't draw too much attention I don't think I think this works what do you say Trying to get a good angle on this. Hopefully you can see. Yeah. I think this would be a nice alternative uh, to uh, the black one. You know, it's it's not as contrasty. Kind of tone on tone, which is cool. But you got just a hint of contrast here. with, a, with This ties into a bit of the yellowish color in here. And uh, it's, you know... 
got kind of a it's got a brush finish, so it's kind of satin and matte like, which works. It's not exactly like this, but uh, it's not high polished out, so I think it's definitely better than than uh, it would be if it was high polished. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. This got way longer, of course, than I sh it should have been. Uh, this was an unboxing and then some. I just wanted to show this and get a couple of quick, uh, uh, you know, shots with uh, the options that it comes with, the straps, uh, some close-ups, and just one of the new straps that I got for this. And there will be more later. Thanks.